Hello and welcome to Vinyl Worthy Albums. I'm Luke, I'm a picky vinyl buyer and a deep diver of music. What we do here is go through albums that I can enjoy from start to finish without feeling the need to skip any tracks, and if an album can do that, then there's a good chance it will be considered vinyl worthy. When an artist has a vinyl worthy album, I then listen to their whole discography to see how I feel about it. This is my own journey of music discovery, and as you join me, I hope you discover some music you too can enjoy. The reason I make this series is because I'm simply looking to talk about music. I hope you can join in, give me your thoughts, share your own vinyl worthy albums, and I may get the chance to check them out. Baths is the musical project of Will Weisenfeld. Weisenfeld is an electronic musician and producer from California. He began making music starting with piano lessons at the age of four. He later attended Berkeley, where he studied music composition and continued to develop his musical style. Baths' music is characterised by its eclectic blend of genres incorporating elements of electronic, indie and experimental music. His debut album Cerulean, released in 2010, received critical acclaim for its unique sound and inventive production techniques. His subsequent albums Obsidian and Romoplasm further explored his sonic palette and showcased his evolution as an artist. Baths' music often explores themes of emotional vulnerability and self-discovery, with introspective lyrics layered over intricate electronic soundscapes. Baths has established himself as a pioneering figure in the electronic music scene, pushing the boundaries of genre and blurring the lines between experimental and accessible music. For me, I first discovered Baths in 2016 thanks yet again to Spotify Discover Weekly, and it was the track Aminals that I first heard. I loved it, it was unlike anything that I had heard before, and I just had to check out more, and I'm very glad that I did because I discovered a gold mine of music. And I also have to add that thanks to Will and his music, it was what single-handedly inspired me to dabble in electronic music for myself too. But enough about me, let's talk about the music. Okay, so these ratings are pretty damn strong, I would say. I am leaning more towards the back end of this album being the stronger half, but altogether, as a whole, this is a fantastic album. Now, I've heard people describe Cerulean as quite a summary album, but I kind of disagree. I think in some ways it can be seen as quite a floaty, ethereal kind of album in ways, but there is a undertone of darkness lurking in amongst all of these tracks, I would say. Maybe minus Aminals, which is just pure childhood delight. We open up with Apologetic Shoulder Blades. It's a short and sweet, lovely opener, and a great taste of what's to come. So if you are discovering Baths for the first time and following along in chronological order, then if you like the sound of this, then strap yourselves in because there's some awesome stuff to come. With track two, Lovely Blood Flow, I can see where some people will hear this and think that it's not for them. The vocals on this one are what I've seen criticised the most. And while I do personally enjoy this track overall, if you don't, then don't skip out on any of his other music as the vocal technique that he uses in the vocals on this track is not something that gets repeated a lot in his music overall. So yeah, definitely maybe just treat this one as a skipper and discover some other great tracks to come if this isn't your thing. Next up is Maximalist, and this one for me is closer to the upper echelon of the Keepers, like Apologetic Shoulder Blades for me, while track number four, Love Heart, is closer to how I feel with Lovely Blood Flow. I like it overall, but it's not a standout for me on this album. But what is a standout is, without doubt, track five, Aminals. This track is extremely evocative. Even without the samples from the kids, it evokes a childish imagination, and the bouncy sounds that I believe are played on strings sound like happy animals playing. It's a unique track for sure, and it's a must hear for me. If I was to suggest a single track to get people to experience baths for the first time, then it's probably going to be this song. It's an easy pillar. And then we have a run of pillars following on from this. Track 6, Rafting Style at Everglades. What a beautiful name for the track. And it's a fitting one as I find myself picturing myself Rafting Style at Everglades. It's transformative music. 
This is also the last track on the end of the first side of the record, and it's a gorgeous track to end on. The second half of the record opens up with Hall, and I love this track so much. It starts off with this very playful intro, and then moves into this very steady tempoed song, and it's absolutely lush. The lead melodies on the strings here, it has almost like a tranquil, the cure vibe to it. The next track, Your My Excuse to Travel, is another favourite of mine. The keys on this are a standout, and I love Will's vocals on this. The shift at 2.12 is also a standout moment. Sounds to me like he's adding in an octave on the higher part of the register, and then doing a little rundown from it, which is that little detail that just, it's so simple, but it adds so much to it. The next track is Rain Smell, and this one is excellent. I would say that because it's mostly an atmospheric track and it repeats itself pretty much all the way through, it's hard to rate this as an essential listen, but as part of a track of the album, I think it works excellently. I also really enjoy the next track, Indoorsy. The effects on the vocals are fantastic, and the soaring and tapering of the drones in this one is a favourite aspect of mine too. Definitely up there as one of the better keepers and not quite reaching into the pillar zone, unfortunately. Really good track, just not essential. All right, the penultimate track, Plea. I absolutely adore this track. Considering the content of the song is that of desperation, the brightness that has been present throughout the album is still present here too. Let me know if you agree with this, but it also feels to me like this one has the most understandable or intelligible lyrics out of all of the tracks, as it's not drenched in effects like many of the other tracks on the vocals. On the final track, Departure, the filtering on this track takes the remaining brightness and squishes it down until it eventually fades away. I also love how the percussion reminds me of a steam engine on this too. Another fantastic closing song. It was a great way to end the album. Overall, the production on this album is brilliant throughout. So overall, I thoroughly enjoy the production all the way through on the songs, and the songs themselves range from solid to brilliant. It's vinyl worthy. All right, 2011's pop music false b-sides. On my first listen of this a few years ago, it didn't agree with me in the same way as other music did. It's possible that my enjoyment of his other work overshadowed this one, and upon revisiting it now, I'm enjoying this one a fair bit. It's slightly more experimental, quite glitchy and rough, and it has a lot of sidechain compression. As you can see, most of the tracks I consider to be keepers, minus the vapors. I just can't deal with the squishy noises on that one, I, I have to skip it. If I had to pick a couple of favourites, then it probably would be between Overseas, Nordic Laurel, Turian Courtship and Seaside Town. I say that Baffs' music is probably best experienced with headphones generally, but with Nordic Laurel especially, the panning on this one benefits greatly from having a really good pair of headphones. So because this is a collection of B-sides rather than an actual LP, it does have a feeling of a lack of coherence, and that's only to be expected, so I won't dwell on that too much because I think that would be unfair to expect it to flow like it would with his other LPs. But flow is something that I would be looking out for in an album and this doesn't get that benefit unfortunately. Alright so a final thought on this album is that it's mostly good but nothing that essential. After all it's a collection of b-sides and that's exactly what this is. Also in 2011 is The Nothing Nightly Daily. I would say that the first and last track on this album would fit quite nicely onto Cerulean, and the artwork of this EP is very similar in style to Cerulean as well, so I think Will was very much in the same kind of mindset as what he was going for with Cerulean, as evident in his artwork of this. The intro to The Nothing might be a little bit jarring, but once it gets going around about 55 seconds in, it starts to really take shape and form with the track, and I rate it. 
and it's really short and sweet at 2 minutes and 37 seconds too. My problem with Nightly Daily is that the production on it lets it down. It's too busy where underneath the drums is a lovely simplicity and it gets totally lost in the mix, which is a shame. So what could have been a lovely track has unfortunately suffered from poor production. And it just comes across as really, really rough for a properly released track, in my opinion, which is rather out of character for a Baths track. And the final track, Sleepless, is lovely. It's very much in the upper tier of the Keeper zone, but not quite reaching into the Pillar zone. Now, some people would say that Obsidian is the polar opposite of Cerulean, as they see Cerulean as being a very bright and upbeat album. And I don't really see it that way. I think that Cerulean has a certain darkness to it that is overshadowed by its brightness at times, and that we saw hints of what was to come with Obsidian. But what was really the catalyst for the direction of this album was that Will contracted E. coli. So the mood is more somber and the tempo is slower. There's less glitching out and less heavy side chaining. And if it shows one thing, then it's going to be that Will was never dependent on those techniques to create interesting and enjoyable music. And I have to say that Obsidian is my favourite Baths album overall. I think it is the strongest and most consistent album that he's put out so far. We open with Worsening, which is brilliant. The tone is immediately set. This is a bleak appeal from the depths. I love the lyric, where is God when you hate him the most? And also, Will's confidence in delivering vocals has noticeably improved. The next track, Miasma Sky, was my introduction to Baths. I feel like this track is the perfect summation of what this album really is encapsulating. The ambience that we hear at the beginning and the start is absolutely gorgeous with the melancholy light it brings. And when the song kicks in as well, it has very much a, a solid beat to it that can actually keep you bopping your head along to as well. Despite it being very dark, Ironworks continues the sorrow and it's another great example of Will's improved singing at this point in his career. On track four, Ossuary, I love the driving bass. It's just what the album needed at this point to pick up the pace. But with that pace being picked up, when it comes to track five, Incompatible, it does slow down yet again, but this is by no means a track to sleep on. It takes a little bit of a build-up, but once we get to the chorus, it is absolutely beautiful. And... It only gets better as time goes on throughout the track. And that concludes side one. Much like on Cerulean, I favour the second half as well when it comes to Obsidian. And we have a run of four pillars in a row for me, starting with No Eyes. I love the energy that's pulsing through this track. And as well with Will's rising frustrations leading into some really distorted vocals at the end. The melody that he's got going on in the chorus of this track, it's one of my favourites that he's written, and I love the progression that he's got on the keys with it too. It's a perfect track for me. And you know, sometimes it can be hard to follow up from a pillar when it's a perfect track, but he does it again with Phaedra. I love everything on this. The percussion, the bass, the melody, the keys, the vocals. With the piano lick at the beginning that you can hear, I love the sample that he chooses of this piano it sounds very simple almost like a retro video game kind of thing but it fits in so well i really enjoy how he will dip the song and then continue it with the piano as it breaks in between and then how it hits you with the increased intensity at the end and we've slowly been leading up to this getting heavier and heavier and more and more intense and we hit the climax with Earth Death and oomph, the production on this is huge. It's evocative of an epic apocalypse and I love the intro with the sound of what is evocative almost of like a, a demon of hell. Although I don't rate Inter as being a pillar, that doesn't mean that it doesn't serve a function perfectly for what it is. The operatic technique that Will is using with his vocals here is almost like he's playing a ghostly version of himself. 
following on from all of the chaos that's ensued from Earth Death. Final thoughts on Obsidian are that this is the album that I return to the most from Baths, and each time that I listen to it, I find new love for it. Following up from Obsidian in 2014 was Ocean Death EP, and this feels like an extension of Obsidian, so of course, it's brilliant. Starting off with Ocean Death, it's 5 minutes and 29 seconds long, it's deep, it's intense, and its name is appropriate. It follows on from Obsidian's tone with the haunting vocals and the dark tone throughout, and the abrupt crashing sound at the end. It's really a small thing, but it's something that I really look forward to every single time that I play the track. Easily a pillar. And the next track, Fade White, is also a pillar. I really enjoy the repetition that goes on here. If you listen to Adam Neely explain why repetition legitimizes, why repetition legitimizes, then you'll get an idea of why I like it so much. One of my favorite parts about the song is how it picks up the tempo in such a seamless way as well. And Voyeur is also a pillar. On this one, I especially love all of the vocals. I also love the guitar tone that he's found. It reminds me of the tone that he was using on Hall from Cerulean. And at this point, it feels like something that's quite a signature of his. While Loretta is only a keeper for me, it's a top tier keeper. And it could be possibly only that it's amongst some fantastic pillars with the three tracks before it that it's not actually considered to be as much of a great track because of what it's amongst. That's an interesting concept for me to think about. And the final track, Yawn, it's very Obsidian-esque, with the glitches which have a beastly feel to them, similar to the sounds we heard on Earth Death. I find the first half of this song pretty much fine, however it's the ending which really lifts this one up. It sounds like a harp of some kind at the end, and that's one of the elements that I like the most about this track. Will really knows how to pick his sounds, that's for sure. When Romoplasm first came out, I was very excited for it. It was the first Baths album that I could listen to upon release, and upon hearing the brighter sound that Will was going for, it was really fresh, and I was quick to buy it. Looking back on it though, I do now feel that this is his weakest album, and that while there are some great songs on here, I do feel like it's got some of his weakest tracks altogether. The first track, Yeoman, Man, is possibly Will's most poppy tune yet. It's accessible, catchy, and is even structured in a typical verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Extra Solar continues the aesthetic from Yeo Man, it's continued pop, and really it's mostly the choice of sounds that are used here that makes this interesting for me, rather than the actual song structure or the melodies themselves. Abscond is possibly Will's most romantic song. He's in love alright. And it's not too sweet either. It does feel genuine, and it's nice to hear him in a good place. Next up, however, is more of a sombre track, which goes against what we've been listening to so far. Nonetheless, it's one of my highlights of the album, with Human Bog. <laughs> I just can't help but laugh at the name of it. <laughs> That's funny. Human Bog. I just... It's like one thing to read it, but then for me to say it out loud as well, <laughs> it's just even funnier. Anyways, on this one, the vocals are one of my favourite parts. I love the dynamics that Will is using here with the very high head voice and also his deep register. I particularly love the lyric, I ran out of expectancy, everyone alive lives fuller lives than me. I feel like I've also felt that at times. On Adam Copies, the energy is lifted right back up. This is definitely up there when it comes to some of Will's best sound design. I love the glitches that intensify and culminate at the end where we get Will screaming for the first time briefly. What really lets this track down for me though is that the lyrics in this one aren't quite as evocative compared to much of his other work. And I feel if they were, then this could have been elevated into a pillar for sure. Lev feels like a short interlude. Not a lot to say on this one. It fits quite nicely into the middle of the album and 
at times the EQ filtering on this track reminds me of Cerulean. Coming up we have some weaker tracks in my opinion, starting with I Form. It's a song about his early years and while I like the idea of it, it's not the most memorable song for me and it does feel like it's a little bit too all over the place. And I feel the same way about Out and Superstructure. The production and instrumentation is typically good, but the lyrics and melodies just aren't that memorable. Things do get better with Wilt, however. I love the main melody on the piano and verses. His low pitch vocals work for me. They remind me a little of Lou Reed and Leonard Cohen. Despite loving the verses so much, it's the chorus and the bridge that are what hold this back from being a pillar. With references to mining ore and monasteries, I can't help but picture RuneScape when I listen to Coetus. But despite giving me some flashbacks to my beloved teenage years, the track is forgettable and it fits into the background, if anywhere. So it's been quite a rough second half of this album, but fortunately the final track Broadback is one of my favourites from the album. It's much better. I like how the beats match up with the vocals in the post-chorus verses and I love the ending where the intensity builds up to the point of screaming vocals. It's a great up-tempo way to close off this album. A couple years later in 2019, Baths drops a single with Clarence Difference and this is mostly an instrumental and I guess after the wait you would have expected something a little more than this. But nonetheless, it's a lovely little single. 2020 gave us a collaboration between Baths and La 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 with a bunch of Euro signs, is it? And then all kinds of things, heaven, exclamation marks, whatever. And I like it. It makes me wonder if we're going to see more collaborations with Baths with other artists because that would be a great way to freshen up whatever Will is working on, I suppose. And then in 2020, we get pop music for Speedsides 2. This one is less glitchy and less experimental. I appreciate having these put out rather than hidden away. And I would be in agreement that these are B-sides. I guess the only standout for me is Veranda Shove. And I really like this one because it's a throwback to Voya from Ocean Death, as you will clearly hear if you play those two tracks side by side. Other tracks to note are Stomach Tile. To me, this is one of his most minimal tracks he's released under the name of Baths. And on Fortuna, it has some cool panning once again. That is really fun to listen to with headphones. I will absolutely be following everything that Will Weisenfeld does in the future and I very much encourage you all to listen to his music too. That concludes this episode. Thank you for watching if you got this far. Remember to check out other Vinyl Worthy episodes if you like this. I would taste might align more than you think. Or you may discover something new to love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Bye 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 bye.